Okay, so this step is a short but very important one. We're going to look at organizing the material graph that we've created. I'm going to do that through the use of comments. Comments are great. So let's have a look at that. So this, as I've said, is a really simple material that we've created here. Uh, but these materials can easily be made up of dozens and dozens of nodes, loads of different material expressions, mathematical equations, and they can quickly get confusing, especially because if you're not careful, you can have all of your wires crossing over each other it can be really difficult to follow and i would strongly recommend using comments to avoid that so what i'm going to do is just comment each of these nodes so that i know what they're for if i reopen this material in a few months and i forgot what everything's doing so it, it is a little bit overkill for a material this simple uh, but obviously i want to get you into the habit as early as possible so this one here is the diffuse one so making sure i've got it selected i will press c on my keyboard and that will create a new comment and you can see up here it's prompting me to give it a name so i'm going to call it diffuse I press enter to save that and i find that if i've just got one in there it's a little bit bigger than i need it to be so i'm just going to shrink that down a little bit uh, and then we'll create another one so select it press c this one is my roughness one and this one here is normal so now I'll know what everything is for, which is nice to know. Okay, so what you can also do, and this is really handy, if you have got multiple nodes making up your diffuse, which can happen, um, you can group them together using comments. So I could have selected them all, pressed C, and it would have put them all in a group, and then you can drag them around together, which is really, really useful. So what I'm going to do now is just neaten this up a little bit like so, so I'm just gonna pull this up there. Yeah, so now everything's commented and when I come back to it, I'll know exactly what each node is for. So, short, simple step, but an important one. The next step's gonna be a little longer and more complex because we're gonna start introducing a much better way of working with materials, which is through parameters and material instances. So make sure you're switched on for that one because we're going to step up the, the difficulty a little bit. Thanks for watching. If you really want to take your learning further than I can cover in this series, then I highly recommend checking out Pluralsight. They have loads of really detailed video courses covering game art and game development using Unreal Engine 4. When I learned how to use Unreal a couple of years ago, this is where I went and I log in regularly to take a new course and improve my skills. I recommend checking out the Introduction to Unreal Engine 4 course by Joshua Kinney. This is really good and offers a good overview of what you can do in Unreal. You can get a free 10 day trial by using my link in the video description and you get full access to all of their courses for that time. At the end of your 10 days, you can either subscribe for more or cancel, totally up to you. It's gotta be worth a free trial though, right? I'd like to say a massive thank you to my patrons. Your support helps me to keep making videos like this one and I really appreciate each and every one of you. It really blows my mind that people will support my channel and my work by pledging their money through Patreon. So again, thank you all so, so much. If you aren't already a patron and you'd like to offer your support, then please go to patreon.com forward slash Shane Whittington.